faces in this room that I haven't met, but I feel a little bit like I've met you because I've read your bios. And uh, we have a room full of badass women. I mean, would you have to agree? <laughs> bios and what people choose to share I think it's really interesting and um, sometimes for some women that have been to these get-togethers before sometimes they switch out the bios depending on the uh, the topics can everybody hear me because I usually have a very loud big voice okay so um, so anyway I just wanted to tell you a few things because for those of you that either don't know me or don't know the group of women that I'm trying to grow it's called the wise and wonderful women I would say that most of the women are 45 or older, but I actually would really love and do love to have younger women in the, in the group. Um, we had a bunch of, of uh, teenage girls that were going off to college uh, at the end of August, and they came for, um, they came for a, uh, a, a group on kind of going for it at any age. And their moms all said, and they just were kind of coming. The, the moms didn't make them, they kind of hung out, and they couldn't stop talking about it. And I think if we are models for young women, but I want to be models for each other because there's a, I don't know, does anybody know the Wolfers page on Facebook? What would Virginia Woolf do? Okay. So it's an interesting group because people are burying their souls. They are on that website and, and it's great. I mean, I really like it. But what I find is there's 30,000 women on there and when it comes time to do something or call for, for action, there doesn't seem to be anything. They're virtually connecting. So I moved into this building. I've got this incredible space. When I walked in here, I just, I just felt that I was going to do events in here. It's not easy to do it, but it's easier than if I didn't have it. So I want people to get together, and the reason for the bios is so that you get to know each other before you walk in the room, that you feel like you're not walking in cold, but that also when you leave, please connect with each other. See who it is that you, because actually I've got a friend of mine here from, uh, from, from actually South Carolina, right? So she wanted to meet the person that was doing the graphic design. Okay, right. So, okay, so that's, that's Brooke A, right? Brooke A, right? I don't even know why I know this. I couldn't tell you when I had for breakfast, but okay. So anyway, so meet that person. Um, you know, Monica went ahead and did a screenshot of somebody that she wanted to meet, all right? So um, this group just happens to be the singles, you know, friends of friends or people that are single. And I don't know how many of you were going to come to the original event. So let me tell you what we were originally going to do. During the past events, I've asked women, who's single and would you be open to coming to an event where you had to bring another single man? And it would basically be, you know, wasn't good for me, but could be good for somebody else. And we would have an event where we wouldn't be just sitting in a room feeling like the person that doesn't get picked for the kickball team, right? But we were going to do a scavenger hunt. And I am awesome at putting these together. We were going to get together here. We were going to run to Hudson Yards, find, shoot things, take pictures, come back here, have a glass of wine, and be, and be good. But people freaked out about it. Now, people like Monica and people like Jinzy, where's Jinzy? Jinzy just walked into the room and she just walked out of the room. She's going to get wine. So the two of you were like, I got six men and I am not in. Okay, a lot of men, right? I know, a lot of you said you would do it in a heartbeat, but then a lot of you froze and didn't respond to me and I thought you were hiding. So, who of you, I just want to know, a, a, a show of hands, who could bring one normal, not incarcerated man to this party, okay, that lives like, okay. So, so there's a decent group of us, so I am going to do that again. I encourage you, please help me out here, because if I send out an event, respond to me. Because if I don't hear back from you, then I think that you're freaking out. And a lot of you were freaking out. So anyway, I switched gears, and we put this great panel together. Um, and um, so, and the, and the one other thing that I just want to say, um, I really would like, please, if you're not on Facebook, at least join Facebook for me. Join the, join the, the Wise and Wonderful Facebook page, all right? The reason is that I'm able to go ahead. I want us to share articles and information, and most importantly, be able to just give you information about events. 
okay? Because sometimes what happens is that I'm sending it out to a mass email list and I don't want to bother people. So I'll put it there first and if you guys want to come, because more and more, we already have 400 people on the Facebook page. More and more they're going to sell out. So I want to be able to give people that have come and are kind of interacting kind of a better uh, you know, chance of getting to the events. The next event is going to be November the 1st, held here. It's also on a Friday night. I try to do them during the week, honestly, but these were the only two nights that I could get for the room. It's going to be my plastic surgeon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just saying. My plastic surgeon that I know has a... No, no. Uh, anyway, and, um, and also um, a great, great, great dermatologist. Pardon me? Machines here. <laughs> Exactly. We'll be doing procedures. Exactly. And then a great, great dermatologist. So it's about invasive and non-invasive, and they're both great. So anyway, that's November the 1st, and then we'll be doing a bunch probably every three weeks. So that is kind of an update. Um, oh, sorry. One other thing. I keep saying one other thing. So about the Wolfers page and what I would love for this group. Um, on the Wolfers page of New York, there was a woman that wrote that... Um, that she had to come into town for cancer uh, treatment. She was uh, actually, they weren't sure if it was a, a sarcoma or not. My dad had just had a sarcoma removed and it's not good. She's, and, and so anyway, you're able to on Facebook oftentimes look onto somebody's Facebook page and to see that they're not a scam. Like I think New Yorkers especially, but human nature is, it's a scam. What are they looking for? And all she was doing was saying, I have to come in on a Monday night. I have to see my doctor on Tuesday. I can't afford to come in here with family, and can anybody have dinner with me on Monday night? Which was a great use of social media, right? So I want for us to get together. I want us to be that group for other women that can do that. And a couple of the people got together. I ended up, I have an extra room. I ended up having her stay. And this is somebody that I ended up having a friendship with that I'm friends with now that I never would have met. And it's funny because we actually have friends in common. She lives in Colorado. How is that possible? But we did. But I want us to connect, when I say in a real way, just not digitally and virtually, because I think that actually brings us to what our topic at hand, which is that we have become the swipe left, swipe right, digital, connecting, but really not connecting. So I really want us to connect. So about real time and dating, talking about connecting, and oh my God, is that tough. So anyway, let's bring up our panel lists. So we have, I'm gonna, come on up. <laughs> We've got, um, okay, so since Beanie came up, Beanie is a, na is a nationally recognized psychotherapist, sex therapist, <laughs> Author of For Better or For or For Better or Worse Forever, Discover the Path to Lasting Love. She's a columnist, national speaker, national host, uh, a radio and television expert guest, host of the Ask Beatty Show on Progressive Radio Network, and she also has a private practice in New York City and East Hampton, so you have no excuse to get a little therapy, okay? Um, and also, she's got a great story about meeting, uh, having love come into her life after she lost her husband. So, Bonnie Winston. Woo! Bonnie Winston is a celebrity matchmaker and has set up award-winning personality. She also has had great success with women of a certain age who are looking for love. She made her first match at 16 and feels that it is a calling. She's been featured in numerous publications such as the New York Post, the Daily News, the Daily, the Daily Mail, Women's Health, and even the Goddess Oprah. Uh, she works with clients in the tri-state area, LA, and Florida. Um, welcome, both these ladies. <laughs> Norman Newman, come on up. Robin is the founder. She is a, the founder of lovecoach.com and works with singles to help them lead a life that feels good through t t strategic socializing. She's been on CNN, the Today Show, has lectured at Canyon Ranch. I want to go and see you at Canyon Ranch. <laughs> I want to go back. <laughs> Mountain House. She's authored two dating books. The most recent, I love this, How to Marry a match. <laughs> she adores the theater and she's a Tony nominated Broadway producer and currently developing an off Broadway musical inspired by her books. She lives in Great Neck and is married and has a teen mensch 
and has a teen mensch in, in the, the making son. Well, that's yeah. good. Because to make a, a good a mensch is a, is a mitzvah. And I, am I Jewish or what? <laughs> and he's dating, I would add. And nothing prepares you to coach your own child. Oh, my gosh. That's, like a, that's a whole other book. And you also, you also did, was it a group about later, in, later, uh, later, later moms? Yes. That's how yes. we met. Yes, exactly. I have a website, motherhoodlater.com, for women who became moms over 35. The, uh, so for those of you that are filming, what I want you to do, if you wouldn't mind, this is going to be filmed. And so don't worry about filming it, because I think oftentimes you're trying to film something and then you kind of like lose your focus. So it is being filmed. It'll be on the website. And welcome, Jinzy, by the way, goddess. I was saying you were the ones that, that had like 10 guys. You were like there. You were going to be the <laughs> running around. Anyway, OK, so welcome, ladies. So um, you know what? I, I'm, Bonnie, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with you, because I think that there's a mystical, there's like an aura around a matchmaker. Um, and I know that you said it's your calling, it, but. It always felt like that. I never felt like work. Um, I'm not an algorithm, and it's a gut instinct. Uh, the first match I made was, I was 16 years old. I don't know if that's even legal, but I <laughs> And they were, you know, they last about 32 years, which is pretty good. Wow. Um, and my yeah, first, you gotta, yes, gotta talk uh, louder, I'm sorry. Yeah, and my first celebrity match, I was 23. And um, I have set up many celebrities, Oscar, Grammy, Emmy winning uh, personalities. But now, you know, now I, I love setting up single women. I really do. So how do you, so how do you work? Because I, 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 from what I understand, I've never been to a matchmaker before. Um, but I understand that some women will, some of the matchmakers will work with men and only, you know, get the payment from men or they're working with women or there's a certain amount of dates that you're guaranteed. So how do you work? How do you, how do you So work? I don't hit a quote. Like a, a lot of matchmakers hit I think a quote. You, need to just a lot of matchmakers. you know what, if anybody's in the back and can't hear, you can just move your chairs up. So that, that's totally so fine. Like be comfortable, of, move up, it's totally yeah. no problem. So I work different ways. I work with clients that pay me and I um, don't just, a lot of matchmakers guarantee you a certain amount of dates. I try not to do that because if you have two dates left, you may be turning down really great people because you're waiting for like something better. So I try not to do that. Um, and then there are people that just go into my database that get fixed up with clients that pay me. It's very boutique-y. I don't have a lot of clients. And maybe at one time, 12 or 15. And then if somebody gets into a relationship, they freeze it to test out the relationship, or if somebody gets engaged, then I can take on a new client. And it's, it's referrals, and um, I try to do, you know, I try to give them really good advice. Some people are open to it, and some people are, you know, not. Well, it's funny because I was, well, 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 right, well, we'll get to that in a second. But Robin and I were talking earlier, and she was saying that she gives a questionnaire. So Robin's, you know, a, a, a love coach. So, so tell us kind of just, tell us a little bit about kind of how you would describe what you do. I mean, sure. Well, it came, it grew from my books, first of all. This is my second book. My first book was How to Meet a Mensch in New York. And I was doing a lot of speaking gigs and things, and my friend started to say to me, you know, you should offer one-on-one -on -one advice. And I said, okay, well, that sounds good, because everyone's need is different. What does that even mean? And I said, let me do an interview, and I'll put it out there. If the phone rings, I'll figure it out. I was on the Joan Hamburg show. I announced it, the phone rang, and I was like, okay, now I have to do it. So what is that? And so I called myself a love coach. I really didn't know what I was doing. I was really more like strategic socializing. And so what I do is I help people think out of the box to create a plan for them that's personalized. And I get you out there to try new things, to expand your horizons, to hopefully really own your attitude and own your actions. Because as Anne and I were saying on my way over here, it's, I find it so often people will say, well, I try, I'm out there. There's just like no good people. And my next question would be, okay, maybe you are going out there. What is happening when you're in the room? Well, one of the things that I found that was interesting was that you, you give them a questionnaire. 
Yes. So do you do yes. you give them a questionnaire? I, I mean, do. Is it it's a client intake form. Yes, because right. you have to know what their dating criteria is. You have right. to know so what their so, non So give me like give me ten are. questions that you might ask them. Um, you know what religion is important to you. Uh, what what are your hobbies? What is your um, Do you have children? Do you want more children? Are you open to dating a man with children? With men, it's this, the same thing. It's the same questionnaire whether it's a man or a woman. Yeah. Right. And um, and your questions though are yeah. a little bit different because right. mine is more like what has been your path so far? Like who have you dated? Why has it worked or not worked? Do you think? What are your efforts? What are you open to doing? And how can I help you? Because I find that when people come to see me, you hope that they'd be ready, but sometimes people think they're ready and they're really not. So, Beatty, you you were saying that you know you was it a book that you, yes. So it was how to basically not make the mistakes over and over again. So as a therapist, because you know I think anybody in this room, either if you haven't had a long relationship. Um, or you have, you know, a lot of the times it doesn't end well. Or even if you end amicably, it's incredibly sad. It's a, it's a, it's a grieving process, it's a loss, or sometimes far worse. Um, and so I think that there has to be that mourning, that healing, or the figuring out right. of what went wrong right. so that you don't repeat the patterns. Because how many of us have repeated the patterns? Because I can, yep, 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 hard carrying repeat offender. Okay, so right. tell, tell us, Beatty, yeah. what your... Let, 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 me, let me just give you a few very quick statistics, okay? Uh, you know, that October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and every single day, three women uh, are murdered by their so-called intimate partner. Uh, one in five women in their lifetime will be abused in some fashion, verbally, emotionally, physically, or sexually. The divorce rate, I just want you to get some reality here and then I'll very quickly tell you the three things that I've discovered over the years that we all need to do so that we will never make a mistake and love again. The divorce rate for first marriages has gone down a little bit. It is now 45%. The from 50, so uh, <laughs> A little bit, a little bit better. Even less men in the dating pool. Not a good statistic. We want the dating. We want the first marriage dating. Okay, sorry. The, <laughs> the divorce rate for second marriages. Does anybody have any idea? Higher. Want to take a guess? Higher. The Higher. divorce rate for second marriages is uh, 63 percent in the United States, and the divorce rate for third marriages in the United States, I'm Canadian, is what? Is, uh, is 72 is 72%. Wow. Oh, what? Wow. So, Whoa. so what I've discovered, okay, in the past 35 years of being practicing psychotherapist and sex therapist, I, I did some research uh, with 450 people, uh, which culminated in the book, and what, what I discovered was that there were three things, just three things, but they're big things, that we all need to do so that we'll never make a mistake in love again. The first thing is that we really do need to get ourselves in a good place emotionally and psychologically and psychiatrically. We need to be solid. We need to be solid. And as I used to tell my daughter, Jordana, the relationship needs to be the icing on the cake. So if we have trauma or depression or poor self-esteem or abuse or whatever, we need to position ourselves so that we are really pretty okay. Number two, number two, and I say this respectfully, rich, poor, black, white, gay, straight, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, the majority of people have unfortunately never learned the ingredients that go into a long-term healthy relationship. Not our fault, the schools didn't teach it. If you weren't lucky enough to see it in your family, we're really left to our own devices. Number three, and I'm so proud of this, I wrote this book for, for my daughter. Uh, with the research, my actually my late husband and I, we developed a 10-step formula that actually teaches people how to assess 
who's right for you, who's wrong for you, before committing to any serious relationship. None of this is natural, and you know, as I was saying to, to you at dinner, is that prior to the book, and in my personal life, I'm probably one of the most impatient people that you will ever want to meet personally, and professionally, of course, it's very no. different. And, you know, <laughs> Nathan, my assistant, was like, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> and let me just say that since, since doing all of this work and the research and the book and all this, is that, you know, before I, I would meet somebody and I would say, I've met this terrific woman, this terrific man. I would never, ever make a statement like that again. All I would say is I've met somebody, and we have to be so careful, who appears to be wonderful and terrific and trusting and loving and all of this. And the research found, and I was so upset with the findings, that it takes close to a year, unless it's so clear to throw the person out, you know, as soon as you start to see all the red flags, in order to really find out who somebody is and isn't. Beattie, let me ask you a question on this, because do you agree with that? Well, see, you know, see, because I don't, and, and you've done yeah. the research. Yes, yes. But I can tell you that there are things that I see in day one that I might choose not to look at. Right. And then all of a right. sudden, a year later, yeah. I realize that is a deal breaker for me. Because you have to look at it. Yeah. Right, but I, I, think, I think there's a lot of signs that come up early on right. that you have to... Trust your gut, right. listen to your gut, but also not say it doesn't matter. Right. Because this is all about, at this age, it does matter. If it bothers you and it doesn't feel good to you, that's enough for Absolutely. you. Okay, yeah. so what, what would you... What, I think a tiger shows his stripes. I think you can see that within three or four months. I think you have to listen to what men say, what men tell you. And you can, I was engaged within, you know, six months and married within nine, and I've been with my husband close to 20 years. Yeah. Everybody in my family, done it, you know, it's real quick. Um, How old were you? 20 years ago? <laughs> 18, 18, 18. 18, 18. <laughs> 18. Okay. 30, 30, yeah. 30, 30, 30, 30, I mean, listen, I, I was with... Uh, but you were also a little bit older, so yeah. it was, you knew I was yourself. very immature, yeah. No, but, but can I, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I had, had a response so I to that. I had an ex before that that I lived with that I knew what his deal was, but I chose, you know, we had chemistry, so I hung out, you know, right. long Yeah, time. sex can do that, right? Yeah. So, so, Robin, so... so I had a reaction to that. Um, so, Robin, go ahead. And just said, you know yourself, and I think that's fascinating because people tend to repeat patterns. Right. So you might think you know yourself. It doesn't mean that you're choosing differently or choosing smart. Right. And to the point that Bonnie made as well, as far as you know, dating and a tiger having its stripes, one of the things that I say is that how the person, how you feel about the person in between the dates is maybe even more telling than the date. So give me, meaning, an, so give me an example. Meaning that, let's say you have a great date with someone and you really you know, hit it off, but then you get home and you're thinking, oh, is he going to call me again? Should I text him? Is he going to text me? Like suddenly you're questioning the whole thing. And you know what? You really shouldn't have to do that. Because if the person is a mensch, and a mensch is a decent, responsible person, it doesn't get better than that. And how do you know someone's a mensch? Because they just will be. You won't have to think about it. They'll stand the test of time. And you know what? If when you decide you deserve a mensch, that's when you will find it. My life changed. It's true. My, my life changed. I was living in LA, had an office in Beverly Hills, and I had the only good psychiatrist in all of LA. There's only one. <laughs> and I was coming out of a, a bad, roller coaster ride of a, you know, like I thought it was the love of my life. And he said to me, there are so many kind men. Choose a good guy. Just, you, you know the difference. Choose a kind guy. You know, Wayne Dyer said, uh, if you have the choice between being right or kind, choose kind. And that's also something that I 
that's a, you know just the theme. I think kindness is class, and you shouldn't be with anyone that doesn't treat you kind. Be alone. I mean, just because you want to settle down doesn't mean you right. should settle. And I, I think that you really have to go with that more than anything else. My husband is kind, sweet. You know, he's the. You know, I mean, after that, Dr. P, when he said that to me, it just there was a, just a conscious shift in my. And dating. I'd like to add to that yeah. also because you're right about the kindness. <laughs> but what I find is, as the Mensch author, women have said to me, "No, I don't want a Mensch." And I'm like, excuse me? Like, why? I've actually heard this. I'm like, why? Tell me, why would you not want a mensch? Well, a mensch can't be sexy or stimulating, whatever. And like, really? Like, isn't being treated well, isn't that sexy? I mean, isn't that what you want in your life? I mean, can a mensch not be exciting? And can it not feel good to be treated well? All right, what's a mensch? Oh, I'm sorry. A wasp. We have a wasp. <laughs> <laughs> a good guy. Well, a actually, guy. it's a good person. Uh, okay, right, right, it, yeah. Yeah. It it, it's right. actually a decent, responsible person. It, it actually, yeah, the literal term in the Yiddish woman. just means yes, right, yes, yes, right. the person, as we're saying. Yes, but the origins are male, but it's beyond that at this point. So, Beatty, so, so tell me why... So tell me why you feel it's a full year, and, and, and again, if about, you, but, about, about, right. I mean, not, I mean, obviously, is, and this is what, you know, I really liked what you said, Anne, is that if you're starting to feel early on that something is up, you need to acknowledge, address, yes. and try to resolve as best as one can, whatever it is that's bothering you, and not be afraid to say, you know what? What you said to me last night really bothered me. It really hurt. We need to talk about it. And then you find out, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, what are the most important ingredients that make or break relationships? I will say emotional communication and problem solving. And you want to know how well and how capable this person who you think you're madly in love with is willing to deal with the fact that you are in pain because of the fact that he may have said or she may have said something that really hurt you. And then you were be able, you know, you're able to progress and see whether or not really there's any anything really there for you. And I think we tend, we're afraid and we deny and we avoid and we look the other way and we see the signs that we don't want to be alone. And, and you know, we, we, we make up all kinds of reasons to not put our issues that are bothering us, you know, right there on the table. And it's really important to be able to see how your partner is going to respond. To your needs. To, yeah. to your right. needs. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you, is one of the questions that you ask, I know that you ask this, um, why didn't it work out in your last relationship? Tell me what happened. Right. To see the ownership, because yeah, I don't think right. that there's anybody in this room that, that, I mean, I know for me, my marriage didn't work because we both, because we both were at fault. Yeah. You know, we both had our shit. We yeah. both had our issues. And so I could go through a whole long list. Yeah. And if I did, and I didn't include myself in that, yeah, yeah. then that, it's like an ownership of yeah. your part of it, I guess. Is that what you're saying, right? Like, so I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't understand that. But, but like, you know, just a communication. But yeah. is that do, like a yes. key thing for you? you? Do. Write it down. When was your last relationship? Why did it end? What was your most important relationship? I mean, sometimes you get insight, and sometimes there's no insight, and it, you can't figure it out. But just like, well, cool. it wasn't the one. Why? Right, it was just wasn't better. the one. Right. You, know, right. you get that a lot. Right. right. And that wouldn't be so much your thing, which is that it might not just be the one, but if somebody is trying to find love and being unsuccessful mm -hmm. and feeling that they are kind of just kind of getting there but not getting over the the, the, the hurdles mm -hmm. that may be kind of looking at that. I mean, I don't think yeah. as, a, as a matchmaker you're so much worried about that other than trying to find what really is going to be important and, and you know, the, the, yeah, the important and sometimes connections. You, they don't know themselves. I mean, I had a woman right. who came to me. She gave me a lit. We met at La Pan Quotian, whatever, you know. We sat down for breakfast, and she had a list. And there were 15 things on the list. And I just wanted to say, like, you, like, what are you, a toddler? Like, you have to get 15? <laughs> I, only have, I have three, a pulse, a penis, and a paycheck. <laughs>
said to me, what do you do? I'm a matchmaker. And I go, matchmaker? I go, yeah, let me show you my new client. She hadn't signed up. And I show a picture of her, and they said, she needs a matchmaker? And I went, yes. And she said, I have somebody. What does she do? I said, what she did? She goes, I have somebody. He's Jewish. He won a, a Grammy. I go, Bob Dylan? No. <laughs> and Levine? No. OK, but here was this guy. and. I, I, so she, the woman knew him, and I said, you know, you're going to get a referral fee, and which I do. And she contacted him, and I had a matchmaker, and he had no interest. I said, send, text him her photo. Ten minutes later, she walked over to me, and he wrote, he, he had texted her, um, is she available tonight? They were got engaged. They were, they were engaged. He had nothing on, there was nothing on her list, sometimes you, you can't imagine what, you know, it's right. John Lennon said, life happens while you're busy making plans. Right. And I feel like sometimes you don't even know what it is that you'll fall in love with or who it is or right. what you want. I mean, right. you should have some things that are that important are deal to you. Right. Yeah. But I, you well, know, this guy had a penis, a pulse, and a paycheck. Are they still like, Yeah. yeah. So, I just wanted to interject for a moment. I have uh, worked Yes, yeah, so I, I just partnered with Lisa. We have a client that I brought her that I, I said I. I too, she oh, who? Patty Stanger. Patty? Patty Stanger. Yes, I, I, I work with her. Yeah, I work with her. And, you know, and, I, and I'm saying this because I really want women to take a different perspective and not to look at it from what we want, but what we want. And when that's sounding like a Steve Harvey show, but I have to say, he nails it. What we're not doing is, and what I found with um, these women and their wonderful agencies, they do their thing, um, they're not evaluating the male correctly. I am. Okay, so he is not I am. a candidate. I am. And girls, when you're he is not, there, I'm sorry, pardon me, the candidate. You need to look at, your, at the guy, not, not all this other stuff that you're thinking and seeing for yourself and whatever. You need to actually have like, a little toolbox to open up and say, um, bullet point all these things that make the guy that is he available? Is he really thinking about being ready to make that move? Or is he just playing around? And there's so many of them that do that and they jump into these services. And it's so well, but you know, yeah, the same friends. guy but depends on the woman. Like right. you can have you you can yeah, but if he's not ready. Wait, wait, all right, all right, all right, right, hold on. Right? Hold on. Well, some guys are gonna be players and yes. some guys and and it's and some guys like my husband, he played around, and then I was the one that said you can't do that with me, and he treated me different but, than the last. Okay, one. so I think there's a little yeah. bit of a difference now because it's the age of the digital and the yes. swipe. Yes. So, yeah. so I, I I think that I mean I know for me that I might because I'm on the you know I'm on the. I'm on Bumble and Match. Bumble, I still haven't mastered Bumble if somebody can tell me what's happening there. I'm like, oh my God. I, I, anyway, but what happens is that, at least with Match, I feel that there is, or so I would think certainly with, with somebody that has hired a matchmaker, that they want to meet somebody. I mean, like that is like a real commitment of money, time, energy. I would think that, yes, they might be somebody that is going to Again, she didn't have affairs just because that's in their nature. Again, there are but. there are matchmakers that charge a lot of money, like um, model quality, and the guys pay a ton of mo ton of money, and the women are like gold diggers, and they just want old guys with young. It depends on the agency. I, is that bad to say? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have called that. that. But, you know, I've never even heard of it. But, but you know, I'm just saying. Um, but do but do you think that now with because. 
you know, you have, you connect with somebody. I mean, it, it's, it's, I mean, I, I'm in the trenches. I mean, you guys are, you, you, you are not, but obviously you, you see this every day and, and many of us are. Um, I've even had situations where friends have connected me with somebody. This happened just recently. Somebody, he said, she said, I've got this great guy for you. I've told him about you. Is it okay if they give you a number? Yes, it's great. That's terrific. Put us on an email together. And then he doesn't follow up or he follows up 24 hours later and then doesn't follow up. And I never even talked to him. I can't even say I can't even do like like a hundred percent. So so what you have to do, but 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 it's I think what happens is the distraction of life. So we're already distracted already because we've got everything going on. We're already busy, we're in New York. But it's also, with the, so a lot of them are on the website. So so now Match comes in and now there's like six women. You know, you've gotten this email. It's like, okay, there's Anne. But then there's six women that have written you and you're like, hey. And then it's like, woo. And the, the distraction right, level right. is yeah. incredible. So Susan, we talked about, it's like how to get to the table, right? It's like, it's like how do you get to the table? So that was the whole point of putting together this group of women and men to get them to the table. I mean, yeah. you're doing that too. You are facilitating I, I don't let that. My clients talk to each other before they meet. I do not allow it. It won't happen. The date will not happen. Yeah. Why? I like because you have to trust it. Right. Like I've had it's that not experience. Like their their intention will get too good. Fast. Too fast. But if you I allow them to text, but you won't allow them to No, I don't allow them to text. She said, I curate no. the date. Oh, I say, okay. what kind of food do you like? Do you want a drink? Would you want to meet at a comedy club? One guy I have, he likes activity dates. We find him activity dates to do with these women. <laughs> One guy just won't commit for a three hour meal. I don't blame him. He doesn't want to get stuck with someone he doesn't have uh, you know, chemistry with. One woman only wants to go to, you know, opera every day, opera, opera. <laughs> but she's, you know, she looks, she's, you know, high maintenance. Whatever, right. and you know, and but I will not allow them to talk. So two days or a day before the date, I say hi, hi, Susie, hi, Joe. Uh, you're confirming your reservation at wherever at seven o'clock this date. Now they have each other's texts, and I tell them only use that number if you're going to be late, if there's an emergency, and. I don't tell them it's because I think you're going to flake. It's like, it, it's exciting. And you won't talk before. But it's really because people ghost each other. And life yeah. happens. And let's say he's supposed to call at five. Like, call at five. And he doesn't call at five. And she's like, he's not interested. And, you know, I'm not going to go Starts out. Starts it in your whole head. So I don't do it. <laughs> I want to add something to the conversation. Because we're talking about matchmaking. And you mentioned apps. But I'm actually kind of the old-fashioned person who would suggest, why don't you get out there? Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. try some activities. Yeah. If you want to meet a mensch, do yeah. some volunteer work. Right. I mean, consider expanding your social circle. Coming to an event like this is right. beautiful right. and wonderful. And you might meet some great women here who have a brother, who have an yeah. uncle, who have a party, <laughs> and they invite you. I mean, it's, you and I talked about this on the phone. It's about living fully, and as, as Beatty said, you need to feel good about yourself first, because if you don't, you're not going to meet anyone because you're not being authentic and you're not presenting happy. So I would urge you all to find an activity and get out. Do not rely on the internet. It works for some. It does not work for everyone. It's a numbers game. There's a boatload of swiping going on. Why shouldn't there be? Because it's easy enough to do. And don't say that you're too busy, honestly, because we all are. Right. Let me, just let me, make a commitment to do something. Let me just add. Let me just add one thing. The reason why I named this group um, in terms of this event was dating and friendship, because what I wanted to create here and what I want to create with this group over and over and over again is that it is, you know, it is lonely out there. There's a whole set of. I mean, I, I. I was walking the other day and I got distracted and I was at the top of some stairs and I looked at my phone and then I looked up and I realized that I was about to take a step off of a flight of stairs and I would have broken every bone in my body. And I, you know, you have flashes of things sometimes. It's like, holy shit, like that would have changed my life in, in, a, in a second. But what I also thought about, my kids are not here, who's gonna meet me at the hospital, 
who would like who would be there for me? Now I have an incredible group of friends, but it's like it's a whole different thing. Susan has her sister who broke both of her feet living with her. It's like who would be there for you? Yeah. So I really think that if we have full friendships and if we have full lives, and I want this group to be able to supply that, that we are able to travel together, that we're able to just throw you know, something out on the Facebook page and say, I wanna go out to dinner, you know, let, let's all get together on a certain night. Like, let's do that because if we have a full life and you have a wing person and you have other people to go with, we're not losers. Like, if you ask somebody that you met, like, no, I'm serious. I can tell you I'm 50, I am 57 and fabulous. No, but there's this weird thing that happens. Like, if you meet somebody here today and you like them, it's like, who call? I mean, as much as it's weird to date, it's like it's also weird to make female friendships. It's like yeah. to call that person and say, hey, listen, want to get together for dinner? Right, it's like, are they right. going to think I'm a loser? Right, right, right. You're, you're not a loser. You're here because you want to connect with other women. You took the time tonight yeah. to do that. So business-wise, it's great. But in terms of connecting, pick up the phone. So that's all part of it. If you have a full life and if you are happy, yes, it will lead to more happiness in other areas of your life. Yes, which you can and you even ways that. <laughs> Do it. I want to ask Lady. Yes. I mean, okay. Yes. And this might just be my own thing. Right? Okay. So what those men or women, whatever you want to date, do is is separate from what we do, right? So we control the outcome, or if we know we control the outcome, and I know Bonnie for a long time too. Part of our matchmaking is not just matchmaking; it's also dating advice. Right? So it's once we meet these winners or losers, right? and we're, what we do Absolutely. to take it to the next level. Right? So you either shut it down when you right. realize this guy is yeah. right. not, right. or that's the piece after that, I can only speak for myself, where I struggle, which is you meet a guy who fits all these criteria, right. and then acting in a way yeah. that doesn't come across uh, whatever those other words are. But I think what right. Robin was saying... So, right. well, and, so, Right. But, but Robin was saying, like, like right. haven't you, when you've met the right person, you have to play, you don't play, you know, just like bare your soul, but there's an ease about it. My right? mom used to say, yeah. things like the, it pings like the, it pings like the, it pings like the, it pings like the crystal, it pings like the china. Like it, no, it pings like the crystal, because when I'm a good crystal, when you ping your finger across it, it right. makes a beautiful sound and when I was younger she should go it pings like the crystal and that's right. Right. And, that and I don't sense. know yeah. I mean it's so well, I like, the ball, right? With these apps. Yeah. Even if you're doing this, then right, then you for so I mean I I treat men that way too. Left, right? Oh accidentally I did a right I know, I know. Well, who cares? <laughs> There's like a thousand It's Santa, I did right no, no did. Right? So we're in this different world, which is it's we're all so disposable and it's we how do we become the ones you have to not think of yourself world. as disposable because right. that's the problem yeah. because we are letting ourselves think of ourselves as disposable because you do get ghosted and people are not responding I to you. It it's not just being done to me. I know, but I'm you know what? Start honestly. with not doing it to others because that's yeah. because you, you, you asked me about, I had this, uh, for those that don't know, I had this cab ad and literally I, I put this ad in a taxi <laughs> And it's actually, I'm going to have another follow-up on it next week. And it's about women's empowerment. I knew I was doing it for that. But Does anyone see it? Because it's yeah. 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 I have to say, so, I, I reached out to Anne after I saw this. Because it, it was the most brave yet vulnerable thing. It was incredible. And I reached out to her because I had to meet her. It was yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm totally now. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you so well, um, but in terms of, you know, you, it's easy to feel beaten down, and so sometimes you have to take a breather. But that's why you have to have the importance of dating and friendship, right. because you yeah. have to have somebody to pick up the phone and call. I called up Susan the other day and was sobbing about something that happened that was somebody I wasn't even seeing. It was a disappointment. It was like a step back. You have to regroup and you got to get out there again. Right. Because the thing is, is that it's fine if you don't want to have 
a man in your life right. in that way. Right. You can have men in your life in another way, too. Mm -hmm. But that's okay, but own that. But when you were saying, so, so when the people wrote to me from that ad, I got back to everybody. I wrote back to them, not like, I just said, thank you so much. I'm going to, you know, like, life is, you know, like, a, you know, it's hard out there in dating land. I hope you find what you're looking for. I'm really looking for somebody closer to New York. You know, I did cut and paste. It was thousands of people that wrote to me, but I wanted to respond to them. And when I found out that somebody that I thought that I met was maybe a possibility, and I found out that that wasn't in fact the case, I didn't ghost him. I told him. And you know why I told him? I could have just said, I checked, because I, what happened was I checked him out a little bit and I found out that there was something. So instead of like not saying like, I didn't want to tell him I checked him out, I had to check him out. I, I put an ad in the taxis and 12 million people were to see it, right? So I had to, that would have been stupid for me not to. But I owned it that that was not okay for me. And that was the first step in finding what is okay for me. And yeah. what, because it's owning what doesn't work for you. Right. And letting him know that, and that's it. It's not. You know, yeah. so I would just say to your point, like it's about being authentic okay. and being yeah. honest and having those conversations that are direct. Yeah. Use and your not, words. Not trying to hold on right. and hope for something. You know, be right. yourself. Right. 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 I mean, two of my closest friends I met through Match. And I just said, it's not working for me. That's it. Like after the date, not returning the phone call. That's what I said. I gave him that respect because if you're asking for that respect from somebody else, you better give it to somebody else oh, totally. because you give what you get. That's yeah. right. You get what you give. Yeah. Or I don't even know. I, I had a half a glass of rosé. Right. Well, anyway, I, I so say that with say? regard to mentions, it takes one to know one to find one. <laughs> and if you're not putting it out, you're not going to receive it. But you have to also recognize it when it's there. And go to places where you're gonna find that good person potentially. Where, yeah. in, where would you, if you don't wanna? In, in Manhattan, because I have two kids. Yeah. Well, can you Starbucks. finish the question? Yeah. Really? Starbucks? Starbucks? Where would you go? Well, I want to hear. I want to take the full question. Oh, where okay. No. Because oh, I don't really, quite honestly, feel like sitting at the Regency and having a drink, and that's not what I wanna. That's that's not my life. That's right. Not what I want to do. So, so I feel like I'm rushing to I do the yeah. <laughs> research. But if you go to Starbucks and you say to somebody online, what cake pop do you think I should? What flavors? Yeah, what? start a conversation. Or, yeah. you know, average, anywhere. Anywhere. average oh. eye, regular eye contact, if you look at somebody's yeah. one, two, three seconds. Average yeah. eye, eye contact, eye contact. Yeah. is three yeah. seconds. Yeah. That's yeah. three seconds. A smile at If somebody. you do it, if you hold for seven or eight seconds, Ooh. it's an eternity. <laughs> so do your seven, smile, <laughs> turn away. Yeah. Look again. That guy's yeah. gonna think he picked you up. He's gonna think he picked you up. I right. did with my husband. But I also think of places that you frequent. Like, do you even look at people when you're there? Like, if you go to the gym, do you ever say hi to anyone? You know, I also tell people to have a. With a logo. Well, I was going to say, have a prop. You know, I'm big on the whole prop thing. Right. Like, you know, if you're going to have a prop. Like a, like a, like a, a prop charity a hat. Or a, kid, a, kid's, a kid's It could sweatshirt. be, yes, a sweatshirt, a like, cap. It could be a cute dog. Walk a dog. Dogs oh, are cute. Yeah, you got a bar. I'm bar. I'm bar. I'm a dog, <laughs> pay someone a compliment, you know, if you see someone, you know, say something clever. Oh, I love that hat, or like Bonnie right, said, exactly. you know, what's, yeah. I don't know what coffee to order, ask a question. Exactly. And you know what, just, it's, it's just practice. I mean, maybe yeah. the guy is not straight, maybe he has a girlfriend, a wife, he's not, with my, my dad never wore a ring, because he was a tennis player. But maybe he's, you know, married. You can't take anything too personally, but the more right. you put yourself out there, right. you the more chances you're going to have. Right. That's my biggest concern. I, I'm like caught in this thing that I want an old-fashioned match, even though it's not necessarily means old-fashioned, but more of a traditional. Okay. Spotlight, if you will. And when you when I see and my girlfriends like wow, well, they're the first one to approach, they're the first one, and trust me, they're all married because they've got it. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing I want to do. What if you were what, to what, 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 what do you mean? Yeah, I'm not sure. What if you were to well, try not, you're not, not though. approaching? You're not approaching, yeah, you're just smile. Yeah, but let me no, ask that's you. That's different. That's different. But I mean, literally, when we're at the bar, or, you know, my girlfriend will get up and literally walk across the bar, introduce herself, and I'm like mortified. 
What? But that's why you. But go with she the wing man. Has but that's yeah. She probably gets a lot of I'm saying I don't think there's many of this left, so I'm not sure how many of that's left for me. And I don't have a problem with it. Can I tell you, it's point. unlimited. It's unlimited. If you believe it's unlimited, right. it's right. unlimited. Right, it is unlimited. Yeah, I don't so believe it. Right. It is unlimited. Right. Go have fun. Well, oh, exactly. I do. Oh, I do. Um, yeah, you do. Very careful what I say, just because and I'm you know, you know, living my life like so much more. You know what, this is the thing about well, giving I'm ourselves. Old passion. Like yeah, but you know what? But you're saying hello. You're yeah, not asking. That's not you, what I mean. Wait, but let me just finish. But you're not asking for the date. No, no. I talk to everybody who wants to. You know what I mean? That's different. And it's without even. Yeah, it's nothing with an intent, I think is my point. Okay. Just to bring more awareness to it. Because if you just bring more in and talk and stuff without the deliberate. And I like that. I like mm -hmm. it because I'm also right. like. So, Beatty, what, yeah. what, what would you well, say? You know, what, what I was going to say is, is that I think we have to give ourselves permission to try to go out of our comfort zone a little bit, I, yeah, I you know, right. and that takes, you know, guts yeah. and like courage and support yeah. from friends and to try yeah. some things and to mix things up. I mean, I take the subway to the studio every Monday. That's about the only time I take the subway. And I can't tell you, and I'm not looking. As uh, you had mentioned, I married my childhood sweetheart. Wait, now, wait, wait this is great. Was, wait, hold on. So wait, 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 wait. Right. just to do a little segue on but, this, because okay. this is great. You were in a long-term marriage. I was in a long-term marriage. My husband died very, very suddenly. Within three weeks, he was dead in Sarasota, Florida. And I was a mess, as you can imagine. And about a year after, I get an email from my childhood sweetheart, who I'd had no contact with in over 35 years, who is not a tech guy, who doesn't use computers, and all of a sudden this email arrived. And I was coming, and I, I was really, I mean, the shock of the death and everything. And uh, I was coming to New York to do um, a TV show, and I said, all right, let's meet. And he'd been divorced after a very long marriage, and I, assessed and, com and, and commuted, you know, uh, commuted for two years and we got married three years ago. The last thing in the world, the last thing in the world that I could have ever, you know, ended up with, with Jim, the last thing to be in New York, the last thing to be doing all of this here. And one never knows. And I mean, just being open to the possibilities of, you know, of, of life, as you right. say. Right. It's true. And, and, you know, it was, devastating for me and uh, but again going out of a comfort zone leaving a place where I'd lived for 15 years leaving behind a life friends whatever starting over not easy not easy okay practice the whole the whole thing but um, I had a lot of support from friends right. my girlfriends mm, right. they were great you yeah, know right. go Same do it there. give it a shot right. you know and here you know here I am so let me ask you a question. Um, I, in part, doing the event where you had to bring another, you know, another, like a single guy, I really always had the sense that there was a, a, a great um, way to, to kind of bring people together in that way because I think where you're saying like I'm embarrassed to go and meet somebody and say hello but if you had to bring somebody to the party right you would for me so so that's what I'm saying like when you to bring somebody to a party where you maybe you're feeling like even as a, as a matchmaker you're doing it for somebody else you know you're, you're saying like I have somebody for you it might be it's very different when you're saying I want to meet you so that's why I thought that that would be a great way to do it because even if you don't have a guy that you know, to see a guy on Star at Starbucks and to see that they don't have a wedding ring and to say, hey, listen, you know what, you're single, I've got to go to this party, you know, and, and, and maybe they will end up being the guy for you or your friend. You know, right. you know now everybody, I always vet people and I have two different uh, services that we use for, you know, to check their background and... But in the old days, you know, you met someone, they took your name and number on a piece of paper, they picked you up, you know, I mean. Got in the car. Got in the car, right. 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 you know, right. whatever. I'm just saying, you know, people got married, they were normal. I mean, I, I do that for my clients, obviously. Um, but I think it's, 
you know, you can take a chance. It doesn't really have to be. Would anybody feel, I mean, any of you, are that, I mean, obviously there's many different ways that we're talking about meeting somebody, but would anybody be up for doing like a commercial on their, uh, like about themselves? Like, yes. No, 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 because I think, right, I mean, raise your hand, I mean, because I, I, right? What do mean, like you did? No, yeah, but I just think that there is something. To share it with her. Well, yeah, because I think that there would be, I, I would like to be able to do something where we are adding a little bit of personality besides that picture, right. where we're just doing something really funny, right, So, because I actually, so it's interesting because somebody, gosh, wait, who was it that sent it, a friend of mine sent me from 1958 a McCall's magazine, oh my God, <laughs> I remember what it is. Well, Cause Magazine about 128 ways to meet a man. Meet your husband, okay? One of them was to <laughs> take an easel, place it in front of an engineering school, and pretend to paint, okay? <laughs> Get lost in a football game. Um, it, uh, if your mother is fat, tell your date that you take after your father. <laughs> If your father is fat too, say you're adopted. <laughs> but anyway, there were 128 of the most absolutely insane things. But just making a cute little like video or something like that, or I just think adding personality to it. I don't know. If, 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 uh, I'm gonna. It's just not enough. It's not enough. Okay, and I think it's probably the next iteration. Well, it is, yeah. and uh, so I have an idea. So anyway, Tyler over there, who's actually the videographer of all of my property videos, uh -huh. and actually shot a man for Anne. <laughs> but I want to use it. And, 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 the ne and the next one actually is coming out next week. I'll send it to all of you, and I would really love it if you could like you know blast it out. But it's it's actually saying that. Although the single divorce, New York City dad has remained a bit elusive, okay, we'll just say that, um, that it was a great success. And it was because thousands of women reached out to me to say that they were inspired by the courage to say not only that I was 56 and fabulous, but that I was looking for love. And so the vulnerability, but the crazy thing was that I was actually bold enough to say my age. So that we, that we have to just shut down. Um, because I think that that dialogue of like you know not owning how old you are, we got to just like it's that's a matter of numbers. It's not a matter of like who you are and your but spirit. You know, in the olden days, men didn't ask a lady how old they were. It was none of their business. Right. It was actually, it was actually, it was actually, it was actually when a guy says to me, and he doesn't want kids, and he's older. How old is she? You know what I say? That is the rudest question. Do you not have any manners? Yeah. You know, but I mean, I have really. A question about that. So, <laughs> if you're, let's say, you're turning 16. Tomorrow, in this room, she's having her 16th <laughs> Don't the, the guys that age want like a 30 year old? So, do I need to be dating a 90 year old? <laughs> Week I've gone out five times 
this week. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so do you, are you a wing woman or do you, do you? I do it because do I, I do it for me. Okay. And I also do it because I believe being in the field, I can help my clients. So are you women or men? My, my target market is women. Um, I teach in a group setting. They get one-on-one -on -one with me once a week, and then we have a group call, and then we have a private Facebook group. And I like to do that because as women, we like community. We like having people that we can bounce things off of. And I feel that we're able to be more vulnerable and authentic when we have sisters as witnesses. Yes, there you go. And also, I mean, I'm dating, so. Right, so you're in it. Yeah. So you're in it. So, Beatty, what, 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 what are you, what are you, what are your pearls of wisdom? In I'll terms tell of you we have, we have was, like five more minutes, so. As we're, as we're talking, and I have somebody actually that I want you to be. Whoa! Okay. Okay, there you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to add. She's got, she's got somebody, somebody for me. She's got somebody to pick me up. Hey, yeah, yeah. I'm going to shit off my own boss. Deal. Well, I have a word of wisdom to share. Um, it might sound obvious, but if you're looking to be fixed up potentially, other than hiring someone like Bonnie, Tell people who you know, yes, exactly. because you know what? You might presume that they would think of you because they know you're single, no. but everyone's busy. Sometimes you have to ask for what you want. Yes, So exactly. don't be afraid always. to put it out there. And, and also think of places that you frequent. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law met through their dry cleaner because they both right. went there on a regular basis. Right. Right. And one day they just spoke up and the dry cleaner worked his magic and wow. they got clean clothes. Oh, and they're married. <laughs> <laughs> but but how, how long? Many, like 30 years? How I mean, many term that if But how worked. many how many so, of you because every every person in this room is single. So do you feel Uncomfortable about putting it out there that you're looking for somebody. No, no, I mean, be honest. No, no not at all. Okay. Sure. So you really do. I mean, think about all the people that you're with and you yeah, meet, exactly. and just say, "Do you know anybody?" Because right. people are not thinking like that. They're just no. not. Because I think a lot of married people are also thinking that as single women and single men in New York City, that you got it all going on. Right. Exactly. You know? we're jealous. And like, right. yeah, right. right. That you have this great life. You've yes. got all of it going on. Right. And that it really is not, you know, that you really, and, and they have people, they have to, like, they have to just have their brain pink. Yeah, but I know that with real estate. Together. I mean, with yep. real estate, I'm a real estate broker, all of a sudden somebody will say that they hired somebody that they got a card from. And I'm like, what? Like, we've been friends for a gazillion years. They're like, I don't know. It was like in my, like, it came to my door and I forgot. You know, it's like, so people need to have what you are looking for brought to their attention. And yes. it's not in a loser way. Because no, no, doesn't no. doesn't everybody want to have somebody be happy and find love? I mean, that's a, the most beautiful thing that you could give to somebody. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Yes, darling. Yes. Uh, so when I was here last time, you said that you got a lot of responses from your ad, but that you said from Texas and from here. From the manly states, yes. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. I live here in Chelsea. I can't get arrested in this town. Like, nobody oh, well, ever well, asked me out. You're in the case. Hello. <laughs> well, but I went to Texas on business oh, yeah. for a month last year. Yep. I got asked out every yes. other Well, you know, well yeah, actually, so you what know what's wrong with dating somebody in Texas? Yeah, it doesn't so, have to be right. traditional. Like, so, you know, seriously, as you, I wait, have a client so, in Dallas. Right, so that's the, that's the question. Do you find, because... I think even in the burbs, that a New York City woman is like kind of, you know, kind of. I, let me tell you, it. really good pickings in Jersey. Yeah, that was Dorothy, 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 Dorothy. Can I just say one thing? When you're not asking for a date, you are not at home. You're more relaxed. That's true. And you're more approachable. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the you're more relaxed. And you're more approachable. So take that attitude and do it here. Right. No, but I think. No, right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. No. So Bonnie. So Bonnie. So wait. So, 
So it looks like the body. You can't just look for love in your own backyard. I mean, love isn't always convenient, right? You know. Right. But it's not boring. Would you? But would you say in general because I I have um, a very uh, very high profile client of mine who is probably one of the most beautiful women, very high profile. She's 62. And she said to me, Ian, you're not going to find the man you want in New York. You're going to find him outside of New York. Maybe anywhere. And maybe anywhere. Exactly. But is there something, so, so in your opinion, because you're, in, you're, you're not in the trenches here, but you are in the trenches, do you find that something happens to men as they kind of go through the tunnel or go no, over that no. bridge? week that I want to fix up with every single client I have. He's handsome, he's six foot one, he's... He's woke? Is that weak? What is woke? Oh yeah, I would say he's woke. Woke, I... woke, woke, not woke. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but he's woke. He's very, <laughs> you know, he's very well educated, incredibly educated, but not a snob, not an Ivy snob. Very, very successful, owns a townhouse on Montague Street in Brooklyn Heights. With a breathtaking view. Okay, so what's the catch? Oh, right, right. He's right. in Brooklyn. That's the catch. Oh, no, so, no, no. I mean, I mean, get out of Manhattan and go hang out in Brooklyn Heights. Well, Brooklyn's not Texas. I mean, yeah. Okay, so, but Dorothy, but Dorothy, wait, hold on. I'm, I'm going to call you up this morning. Dor Dorothy, Dorothy is one of the most inspirational people in my life. Really, the one that. She gave me my first job in real estate. She was my, the woman that I aspired to be. She was a woman when I was a girl. And I just, I, she blew me away. But I see you shaking your head and saying you're not gonna go to Jersey. And if you wanna meet a man and stop shaking your head about Jersey, girl. So I, I've been online on and off for a long time. And I find that the men in Jersey are just, we just, we just, we just, they, they work in New York City every day. They work so what about their Westchester families. They, they, what about Westchester? I love Westchester. It's a little better, but they're, you know, it's far away. It's hard to come in. It, they, it's just, it doesn't flow. But you don't have kids. Like, they 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 don't who wants a Robin? Go ahead, honey. So, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I'm not shy. If I see somebody who I think is handsome, I'll, you know, if he looks like a model, I'll be like, oh, you're handsome and walk away. But, you know, I'll actually, like, you know, give a number and say, you know, but. And women love it. But, you know, I don't know. But at the same time, I might go out once, but I feel like if a man really likes me, he can do something like that. Yeah. And that's just. You know, what, so do you mean approach you or ask you what? What do you mean do something about it? Yeah, but let me add to that. Sometimes a guy is shy. My wow. husband. And you know what? And you're no. I. I. I'm not saying they won't get married, but they might not approach you because you know what? You're very attractive. Many of the women in this room are, and that's not always to your advantage. For certain kinds of guys, it's hard. Meeting it's hard for certain men who might be more shy. They might be intimidated by someone who's really attractive. And I've seen this. That doesn't mean you don't want that. How do you know you don't want that guy? Maybe that's the guy you should go over and say hi to because he doesn't have the nerve to say hi to you, but he might be a great guy. Okay. okay. But hold on. You can start and make that initial contact, yeah. but I do agree that after a certain point when you lay the groundwork, maybe you say hello, that you then have to let, as my yes. my friend uh, Pam McKenna's mother, let a man be a man. Oh, absolutely. Right? absolutely. Because you do yeah. have to, it, it's with anything, it's with female friendships, with male friendships, with a dating relationship. You have to have some kind of give and take, yeah, right? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. My husband thinks he picked me up. He thinks he picked me up. <laughs> right, exactly. Wait, we're, we're, we're recording this. Wait, we don't want to. <laughs> You want to know something? After the first date, I woke up the next morning and he had emailed me at three in the morning. So I knew he liked me, you know, but, you but know, and he happened. pursued me. But right. initially, I stood behind him. He was watching a basketball game in a in a restaurant, and you know, I stood. I saw he was rooting for the 76ers. He's a Philly guy, 
And I yelled when Alan, Alan Iverson made a basket, I yelled practically into his ear. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> And he told me, my husband's very shy. He turned around and he goes, oh, you're a 76er fan. I go, yeah. Uh, <laughs> because that's my point. He's shy. Right. He probably he wouldn't have spoken to you. never her. spoken to me so, ever. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I do you know, think initiate, but don't ask for the date. Yeah. There's a difference. Right. I think you your know. idea, Anne, of taking these women plus the other women you know and saying, hey, bring the menchie guy that's not for you to an event is brilliant. I'm right. Right. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a, a, a uh, wine tasting. It'll be smaller. It'll be in that other room that we were just in. It'll be it'll be sexier life. We're going to have Tyler actually. Tyler that brings the lighting for my cab ads. He, he actually has this like lighting, and I'm like every blind date that I go on, I need for him to light me properly. It will be so. So ladies, I want to thank our panelists. Afterwards, please reach out to them and read their books, listen to their radio station. Oh, can I just and say, Robin is, by the way, she is a fabulous Broadway Tony nominated. She's going to be, actually, you're, you're trying to come up with an off-Broadway show on... Yeah, I'm actually developing a show based on this, on how to marry a man. Wow. So if anybody is, loves theater, theater, come touch base with me. I mean, me. she produced um, The Comet, The Great Comet. Natasha Pierre and The Great Comet. Yeah. You probably know yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. And I have some other cool projects. I'm happy to talk to anyone who loves theater. Cool. All right. Well, yeah. thank you.